Hey, welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic. In this video, I'm going to show you how I repaired this vintage skill saw model number 77 that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace for free. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more DIY and tinkering videos. I was strolling through Facebook Marketplace and was shocked to see these saws for free. So I picked them up and thus began the fifth episode of Free on Facebook where I repair, repurpose, and reuse free electronic items that would otherwise be destined for the trash heap. This particular saw is the skill saw model number 77, which is a legend in American home construction. If you ever watch the legendary carpenter Larry Hahn on YouTube, this is the saw he uses. He is an absolute wizard with this thing. Anyways, these saws are built like tanks, and they use a warm drive mechanism to spin the blade, which makes them incredibly durable. In this video, I will attempt to repair this saw so it is once again, uh, it, it functions once again. This is not necessarily a restoration video because the goal is to make it, um, make it functioning and not necessarily just uh, the way it looks. And I'm not a collector, so I can live with that. So both of these saws look like they need some sort of work. The most obvious thing is neither of the two have an electrical cord. Um, but this one right here is in real poor condition. Um, which is unfortunate because this is the one with uh, the metal handle. This one has a plastic handle. But it looks like it got dropped from some height because the, the threaded bolt right here where the tape where the table adjustment is is sh sheared off so that's uh, pretty much unfixable and then another part of the chassis is broken here as well the lower guard is missing so this will serve as a donor and also oh, it looks like the switch is missing too so um, i'm not going to spend that much money Trying to get this running, but I, it's just almost impossible to do that. So I may hook this up and see if it, the motor works. So, but that, other than that, this is going to serve as a donor tool. So if I need parts or something, um, I can take it off here. But the goal is to get this one up and running. So this one is in much better condition. Uh, it's the cords is kind of broken off here, but that shouldn't be a problem. And uh, the, lower, the guard is here. The table adjustment works well. Everything seems to be in, in working condition. It's probably you know, over 30 years old, so it's gonna have some dinks and dunks and that. It's pretty much all metal aside from the plastic and that's where you see you do have some breakage there but we'll try to put some epoxy on there all right let's see if uh we can get this um saw running and uh so like i said this will serve as a donor so if we can get one working saw from these two old saws that i picked up for free um that would be a win the first thing i did was to remove the remnants of the old power cord and installed a new cord. The replacement cord for this particular model is around 25 bucks, which uh, seems like a bit of a waste. Um, like I said, this is not a restoration. I ended up just using an old extension cord instead. After that, I added some oil to the gearbox and uh, was ready to test this thing out. Yes, I did remove the blade because, you know, safety first.
if you look closely, you can see massive sparks that come out the back of the saw when the trigger is pressed. And there is also a peculiar grinding sound. So it appears that replacing the cord isn't going to be the only repair required here. The scary size of the sparks makes me think that the cord was purposely cut as a safety mechanism to prevent someone from ac accidentally using the saw. Uh, I'm beginning to think that this saw was used in a professional setting. Um, so in the next step, I removed the motor brushes. One of the brushes came out rather smoothly, but the other one had broken off from the spring. This uh, really um, explains the grinding sound and the sparks. Um, I had to invert the saw and give it a couple of good shakes to get the brush out. While I waited for the new brushes to come in, I decided to inspect the motor for more damage. I did this by separating the stator fuel coil housing from the, from the rotor. Initially, I thought you had to disconnect the motor from the switch to be able to do this, but on this particular unit, you can remove the stator fuel coil and uh, the switch all in one large unit. There wasn't any visible damage to the stator and the armature windings, but I did notice some buildup on the commutator of the motor, so I used some WD-40 and some steel wool to clean it up. I also applied some lubricant to the rear bearing. I used a nylon brush to clean up the brush holders so that the brushes wouldn't get stuck anywhere, and then I reassembled the saw. The new brushes for the saw were only 8 bucks on Amazon Prime. Installing the brushes is really simple. All you have to do is orient them correctly, push down on the spring, and then screw in the cap. Okay, it's time to plug it in and test it out. Works great. And there's absolutely minimum amount of spark coming from the motor. Actually, none can be actually seen. Uh, no real sparks coming from the motor. And also no weird clicking noise. I then reinstalled the blade and it was time to actually cut some wood.
Seems to be cutting wood pretty good.